Here and now, here we are, okay? So the war is still on. This is an unending war. Nothing seems to be able to stop it. So what do we do about it? Well, um, hope, you, hope you're doing well. I was talking to one, someone this morning, and I share with them my views that the UN, our governments, seem to be unable at this point to impact what our government is supporting as part of the slaughter. So the UN and other agencies are doing nothing to impact what's occurring. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, that's the way it is. You know, like the Security Council, you know, like I watched, you know, a lot of it after, you know, I was on the on the line, on the on the picket line there at the uh, Jewish Community Center. And uh, it resembled, you know, like a playtime sort of thing happening, you know, and everybody, you know, like, uh, I want more of that. And I want more of that. Okay, so we compromise and you come out with something that is supposed to do something. Okay, so the idea is, you know, the humanitarian aid was supposed to be able to uh, come into the Gaza and to be distributed under fire, you know, like somehow, you know, like it's supposed to know where there's going to be, you know, like fire happening and they were supposed to avoid it. Okay, so you know, like, are they doing it? I know, like, I haven't heard much. You know, I saw a video on Al Jazeera, you know, of uh, sacks of, you know, uh, weed or rice, you know, being distributed. And uh, it seems, you know, like a still a trickle, you know, because it's being, being done manually, you know, it's only being done, you know, like in some locations as well. And then people get, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, the most minimal, you know, like amount, you know, and it's even, you know, rationed, you know, for, for families, you know. So that you know, families with less than five members, you know, get less food. Okay. So, you know, that's where it's at there, you know, like in the best of uh, situations. So the genocide is continuing and being allowed to continue. So I didn't, you know, find that this was supposed to be, you know, like the intent of the resolution. Because remember the resolution in the Security Council one time, you know, it said, you know, okay, time to uh, uh, do an... Uh, over Libya, it was a air air block, you know, like a air air uh, a, a block, you know, so that there couldn't be, you know, like planes coming, you know, to bomb, you know, Benghazi to kill all the people there is a genocidal campaign supposedly, which never happened. Now it is happening, but all of a sudden, you know, they can't do anything about it, you know, like you know, where the planes, you know, coming to you know take down the airfields, you know, that the the bombers are coming from. No, it's not happening. This is not Libya. Yeah. It, it was definitely a double standard, but I don't really, in my view is not necessarily not Libya. Um, the at, at this point, the more militarily powerful and economically powerful states that are in, in alliance, the Western alliance, the US, Britain, France is wavering because one of his people got killed by a, a, a Gazan bomb. Mm. Um, Japan, they are united in support of the death of Palestinians. Mm. They are united. Yeah. And the rest of the world right now that is that is united against the death of Palestinians has not yet come up with a cohesive mechanism to stop the Israeli and U.S. bomb, bomb, um, bombing of civilians. Mm. That, yeah. I I see it like that. Like you you mentioned a couple of weeks ago, there are quote unquote two wars: one against one against Hamas and one against the Palestinians. Yeah. And the war against the Palestinians is taking a great toll on the Palestinian people. Yet nothing is being done mm. to halt the attacks mm. by the global majority. Mm. These, mm. Our, our demonstrations are important. Our exposés and news media are important. But there's nothing being done to Israel mm. or to the United States to stop stop the funding and stop the bombing. Mm. Uh, Turkey announced today that it could shut down the Mediterranean Sea uh, in order to uh, put pressure on uh, on uh, uh, for a ceasefire. 
uh, Yemen uh, is uh, forming its counter coalition to the coalition, you know, to uh, to uh, control the uh, strait there in the, of the Red Sea. Um, wow, Lebanon, yeah, they've still you know evacuated the whole north of uh, uh, forty eight territory there, you know, on the border with Lebanon. And the Hezbollah is slowly taking out all of the surveillance equipment along the border. <laughs> so, you know, like something big is going to be happening there, too. U.S. military bases are still being pounded. So it's a, it's a regional war already. And uh, But, you know, the Zionists, you know, the government of Israel, which are the essential sort of form of Zionism, it's no aberration that this is happening, you know, in a Zionist state. This is what Zionism is intended to be, and they did well, it I, before. I, 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 think it's yeah, I think it's important that that you say that, yeah. because Israel, from its inception, I even heard some mouthpiece from Israel on a tape recorded show from India, and he had the audacity to talk about their war of independence. Huh. Independence from whom? Uh -huh. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you, who, who who was dependent on you for anything? Independence from Britain, Indi supposedly, but they were sponsored no, by Britain. No, no. no. <laughs> independent apparently from from the Palestinians. Independence. Oh, they call it independence. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Independence or war of independence. I said, whoa. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. They call it the war of independence. You know. I don't remember, yeah, from the Zionist propaganda that I was subjected to. Right. I was like a secret Bundist inside our our Jewish school, you know, and even though the principal, you know, was a Zionist and and, uh, and gave me a little blue box to fill up with coins, that sort of thing, you know. But uh, I was like in a secret cabal with my mother, you know, to uh, defeat Zionism. <laughs> so here we go. On we go, on onward. So there we go. There we I go. Think Good. The strategic, you know, thing that I'm into, you know, that I was taught to by my mother in this instance, you know, as a Bundist, is that it's within the Jewish people itself, you know, that Zionism can be taken on. Because from without, the Zionist uh, parties, you know, have hegemony over the Jewish people and Jewish communities everywhere. So despite, you know, the new generation, you know, they're not connected. They're not inside the Jewish community. They're not inside the American Jewish Congress. They don't even try to be inside the American Jewish Congress. And here in Canada, I tried, you know, to get, you know, the Alliance of Concerned Jewish Canadians to become part of the Canadian Jewish Congress and form an opposition within there against the Zionist parties who were claiming a Jewish identity. And they shut it down. They shut down the whole, Can you know, Can Canadian Jewish Congress, <laughs> you know, right in our face. Incredible. So it is incredible. So the work has to be done from within the Jewish people now, you know, and it's not the same movement as the solidarity movement with the Palestinian struggle. This is an additional movement. This is a new movement. This is a Jewish movement inside the Jewish people, it has a different program, and it's got a different orientation. It's not there to, you know, we don't go there, you know, to the Jewish community uh, campus building to uh, attack, you know, although... Right. We are in a battle scene, you know, with the Zionist administration of the place, you know, because they've got the Israel flag up there, and I'm not allowed to go beyond a certain line in the uh, in, in the uh, masonry there. <laughs> and if I were to do that, just step in there, you know, they could call, you know, the police, and I'd be arrested and put into prison right away. That's, you know, the thing with the police. You know, they're willing to uh, tolerate. They say tolerate, but they have no choice in the matter, you know, because it was ordered by, you know, by a judge, you know, of the city of Montreal. So, you know, they have to follow what the judge says. And, and um, but, That's right. but, you know, and so I get to, you know, put forward a, uh, a, a Jewish program to the Jewish community that comes, you know, to take, to, you know, make use of the services there, you know, like the Jewish public library and the Holocaust museum, you know, and, uh, and, you know, I, I, I speak to everybody who comes there and I say, um, Palestinian lives matter too. Now it's printed, you know. <laughs> and then I've been handing these out, 350 the other day, because we're going to have a mobilization for tomorrow. Good. And, it, and it said it, you know, Zionism does not represent the Jewish people. <laughs> okay. So I put this on the lamppost uh right in front of the uh of the Zionist headquarters there, you know, where I was initially arrested for having written on a poster that they had put up. So if they put up a poster on that lamppost, well, 
I can too, you know, this is up there now, you know, with tape right. all the way around, you know. <laughs> right, very, good. very good, very good, excellent. And uh, so it's headed Palestinian Lives Matter, you know, matter two, the word two there is very important because that means you're, we're speaking to the Jewish community, to Jewish people, so that they understand, you know, because, you know, they consider their own lives, you know, to be important and the, and, and the loss of their, you know, families in the Holocaust and all that. Well, right. it matters now as well, you know, for the Palestinians, the same thing, you know, one Holocaust does not justify another. So right. that's right. painting it. And then, and then it's, oh, yeah. And then, you know, what happened is that Canada voted the, you know, for a ceasefire, you know. It succumbed to the pressure because the mobilization in Ottawa, the capital, you know, was magnificent. Yeah. There was the biggest demonstration in the in Canada, in, in Ottawa, the capital, you know, in all of history. You know, it was huge. Filled up all yeah. the downtown with people, you know. So, you know, the prime yeah. minister had to pay attention because he doesn't have a majority government. You see, Steve, here we have, you know, like majority and minorities, you know, in the parliament. It's a parliamentary system, completely different. And and so he is in a coalition government with the Social Democratic Party called the New Democratic Party, sort of, you know, like pretending to be the Democratic Party of the United States, but it was a labor party right. as well. So right. and they control, you know, the long longevity, you know, of this liberal party government, this bourgeois government, you know, so they have to listen to the uh, New Democratic Party, Social Democratic Party, which was calling for a ceasefire. And it was a very embarrassing thing, you know, for the liberals, you know, not to be calling for a ceasefire if, you know, the Social Democrats would be and they would turn out to be, you know, correct. So this would mean that the uh, Social Democrats could win the next election if he hadn't called and voted for a ceasefire. He was under pressure. So we say, you know, I was saying to people, you know, and it's written now, Canada voted for a ceasefire and you can support it too. You know, like it's logical, you know, yeah. and not, and another way I said to them, you know, so they, you know, like really penetrated into their, you know, neurotic complex, you know, being a Zionist, you know, as the only way to be. And then Canada voted for a ceasefire and we should too. So the word we, I inserted there. All of a sudden we're part of the Jewish community and I'm addressing, uh, you know, us, uh, uh, the Bund is addressing itself to the Jewish community bypassing the whole Zionist, you know, party dictatorship, you know, that controls the place. And this little guy, you know, in the last video, it comes out, you know, like uh, on video saying, you can't talk to the, you know, employees of the uh, Combined Jewish Appeal. And this guy's walking by, you know, I just had said to him, you know, like, uh, not in our name. And he stopped me. He runs out, stops me and he says, you can't talk to him. You know, he's an employee of the Combined Jewish Appeal. And I said, oh, and I, I just said to the guy, are you you're an employee of the Combined Jewish Appeal? Talking to him. <laughs> Uh -huh. and he nods yeah uh -huh. yeah okay he doesn't talk back okay and so he goes in oh, you know nice. so you know like the guy you know like is telling me off you know saying that I, i'll be arrested if i do that and and in fact the police did say that to me you know that if uh if i talk with them uh combined jewish appeal i didn't know what that's mean you know who's a combined jewish appeal i don't know <laughs> but you know i think it's the people who have you know a security tag you know on their belt or something like that so if I could talk to those people, you know, I could be arrested. So, uh, wow. As wow. yeah, it's incredible. So as the guy's walking in, you know, like um, I pretend that I'm talking to the, uh, to the, uh, well, I'm not pretending I'm talking to them both. And I say, you know, okay, I won't talk to you because you're under a dictatorship. And that's the last word that he, and I shouted dictatorship as they go through the door. Wow. That's on tape. That's on tape. Wow. You know, yeah. So, incredible. Uh, you know, I can get pissed off. You know, the guy's telling me, ordering me around like that after he, you know, was blatantly, you know, uh, illegal in having me arrested in the first place. I want to ask you something. What is the status of labor in Israel, i.e. Jewish workers, our Palestinian laborers? What is the status? What's uh, going on? Uh, Multi-layered. So uh, what... Uh, is that you know the the Palestinian population is like low uh, low wage working class uh, under the um, uh, Jewish Arab Mizrahi you know North African uh, oh, okay. working class which is lower than the Ashkenazi working class uh, which is uh, divided into the uh, upper and lower you know the ones from Europe and the ones from Russia and then on top of that is you know the Zionists you know like a uh, Zionist uh, loyalists, you know, who get the best jobs. 
and they form sort of an aristocracy of labor because they're Zionists. So, uh, are there any but, ways but, but, that they oh, work together? But 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 there's a, there's another universe of labor in this in uh, forty eight territory. There is one hundred and sixty thousand Palestinians from the West Bank who who travel each day into forty eight territory, past the checkpoint with a permit to work there as even less a, of a uh, even lower wage, wage labor than uh, than a, anybody else than than Palestinians, okay. uh, you know, uh, of forty eight okay. territory. So the 160,000 come from the West Bank, but now that's stopped. And then there was also, you know, uh, 30, 40,000 coming from Gaza into 48 territory to work with a permit, you know, every day, okay. you know, and nobody talked about this, you know, because they were supposed to be, you know, these bad terrorists, you know, but they were being allowed into the work, you know, like, uh, and then nothing happened, okay. you know, like nobody ever, you know, was killed, you know, with a knife in the back, you know, like as they depicted the, you know, intention to be. So, you know, that that whole labor, you know, class, that part of the working class now has been, you know, butchered off. It's gone. And and the, the part from Gaza, even, you know, the workers who were left inside the 48th territory uh, after the beginning of the uh, of, of the uh, massacre, yeah. they were deported back to Gaza. They were sent back to Gaza to be killed. Even though they, they had been working for... So, right, so right now there are no... So right now there are no Gaza laborers in Israel. That's right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 How about how about is or how about um, Arab Israeli citizens? Okay. Now they used to be excluded from the General Trade Union Federation called the Histadrut. It was you know right. labor Zionists you know and the labor Zionists who were the socialists supposedly they excluded the Palestinian uh, Arabs of. Uh, of Israel because they were not uh, Zionists, okay? Mm -hmm. It was a Zionist yeah. no labor federation. Yeah. So much yeah. so, so much for the working class, you know, like, you know, totally so, sold out. But then so the class, they eventually so no allowed them into the Stadrut, you know, there were some changes afterwards, you know, but it's a very divided working class, yeah. So, so there's no, there's no organization beside this one you mentioned where Zionists and Palestinians, or uh, Arabs and Palestinians, come together? Not really, no. And, and the no. Palestinian Arabs did. I don't think they're allowed to have their own trade union federation, and certainly not. You know, the Palestinians from the West Bank or the Gaza, they don't have a trade union federation. <laughs> you know, not allowed. It's fascist. Okay. So at what at one time wasn't there an Arab worker or Palestinian worker strike? At one time, that impacted the situation in Israel. Well, the Palestinian Authority calls uh, general strikes from time to time, but the workers okay. still go to work in forty-eight territory. They don't, you know, block the, uh, you know, in the morning at five thirty in the morning. They don't block the the way for the big vans that come and pick up the Palestinian workers and drive them into, you know, with Israeli license plates. You know, so obvious. I saw yeah. them dropped off. I I filmed that one time. And, and then they get dropped off by the same van at the end of the day. Big white van, you know, purity and all that bullshit. Because what I was what I was wondering is, was there any labor opposition of Arab or Palestinian workers in Israel at this time, or any labor opposition of of Israeli workers at this time? What's going on? No, the mass protests against the government previously, against Netanyahu previously, that was only you no. know. Uh, and popular uh, civil society. Uh, okay. There was, there was the unions didn't come behind that. There were, <clears throat> there was some, you know, like opposition from uh, military, reserve pilots, right. you know, and others, you know, reserve, yeah. you know, yeah. like soldiers saying we're we won't go up, you know, we don't we won't go, you know, if we're called up, uh, I mean, as long as Netanyahu is the prime minister, okay. And then you know the war started and they got called up. So who knows right. what's happening, yeah. you know. So maybe a lot of them, you know, are on strike there, I and mean, we're not we're not hearing about it. You know, that's an interesting, you know, feature to to explore. Yeah. Well, what about the the murder of the three prisoners uh, who were being held by Hamas? They were shot by their own soldiers. 
Oh, that boosted our credibility immensely, you know, because we were saying, you know, like that, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the Zionist military was killing its uh, its own hostages, you know, and there's, you know, because previously all the dead, you know, Israelis, you know, in the, in the kibbutzim, you know, were being blamed on, on Hamas, right. you know. Right. And uh, and saying that they were burned by Hamas, you know, as if we were, what are they supposed to use, you know, their big lighters or something, you know, like, really, you know, so, you know, they, and so we explained, you know, like, you know, I explained to people on the street there, you know, that, uh, you know, you know, like they were born, they, they were burned by tank fire, and guess who has the tanks, you know, I said to one Karen, so... <clears throat> Uh, you know, that didn't carry enough credibility, you know, with that person and, and with everyone else, you know, because still believe a, a lot of the horror stories. So when this happened and, and the Israeli media reported it and everybody in Israel knew it. So, you know, the, everybody here had to know it, you know, because they can't, you know, separate, you know, the Jewish people into, into pieces like that. Not that strong. And, and so they began to think, you know, that perhaps we had more credibility to what we were saying than, than they had believed previously. That helped, you know, that was a step forward. And then Canada really? voting for the ceasefire. Very good. Right. Yeah. So that helped me, you know, to get more of, you know, like a, a, a more of a, a sympathetic response from people who were passing by. And for right. yeah. cars, you know, beeping their horn, you know, that started happening, you know, passing by in the street. Right. Oh. right. So these these men, these young men were murdered by the Israeli soldiers. Um, mm -hmm. the the terrorism against the Palestinian mm -hmm. Uh, people continues hmm. um how do we how, how do we foresee i think that there's a strategy that can be followed you know like a, a big and big and big terms you know like a big strategy would be you know like if uh turkey for example you know which had previously sent out there was previously a boat you know that was sent down there you know with aid to gaza that was boarded by the israel military and 10 people right. were killed 10, 10 turkish people were killed on that boat bringing aid to Gaza, and the boat was turned around that boat should come back and it should come back with military support. And any is, you know, like, a, you know, a Zionist military, you know, like an effort, you know, to stop that boat from arriving in Gaza should be taken down. You know, Turkey uh, said that it is willing to go to war with Israel to stop the genocide. Well, here it is. This is it, here it here is. now. Yeah, this is the moment to do it. Here it is. And this is what I've been saying for a long, a long time. I think that I'm, again, it's taken somebody as bold as Hezbollah or Anshal, Anshal Allah, the so-called Houthis, to actually step up to the plate. Um, I'm just thinking that NATO memberships, U.S. bases in Turkey, other things are preventing, preventing them from doing anything. I don't know. Yeah. And if the U.S. tried to stop Turkey, then yeah, Turkey could just tell the U.S. bases to to get lost you know like you know like if you know u.s wants to stop at uh, turkish boats then um u.s uh, airfields can go together with everything well, else no. that, i mean that i think that is an option that turkey but i'm sure they make money off the bases i'm sure they make money off the soldiers business commerce i'm sure something's going on that yeah. they benefit economically but i'm with you but it's, yeah. I'm, I'm at the point now that um since there's no international architecture for security for the Palestinians. It doesn't exist. The UN is, is shown its limitations. Um, it appears that um, people in Israel and the United States are unable to get their governments to stop the wars. It seems that way right now anyway. Even though we continue to demonstrate, we continue to support the Palestinians in any way we can. We continue to call for a ceasefire. We have to keep doing that. But yeah. our governments, our governments are not listening. Yeah. The Israeli government isn't listening. The US government is not listening. So oh, the US are, government is 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 you know like sad, you know, like like yeah. uh, totally, yeah. you know, politically corrupt, you know, like totally yeah. exactly. Oh, exactly. Oh, exactly. Dang, I exactly. would never have so, believed, you know, it could go this far. And, and yet it has. Yeah. yeah. Well, to me, but see, to me, what I want people to remember is the basis of the US government is what happened in Israel. Mm. I show up, hey, I want this land. And guess mm. what? I'm taking it. Mm. It's the same thing. Yeah. They, they, mm. they, they can say whatever they did. We were, we were escaping oppression in England, so we came over here to oppress you. Mm. Yeah. It's almost a couple of parallel. So mm. I, I, I just warn people who have been, um, I wouldn't say brainwashed, but who believe the narrative of the U.S.'s, uh, the US's origin 
It was founded on slavery and um, mass murder and relocation of Native people. Mm. And, 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 also, and also the Mexicans, they were occupied as well. Like yes, a, yes, a yes. A yeah. third of the, third of the but, USA is, is like Mexico. Yeah. So, you know, you have a situation quite parallel to Israel, I mean, with with this, with this own historical yeah. um, uh, uniqueness, but we must accept the fact that the U.S. will be in alliance with Israel forever. Yeah, I say forever, yeah. unless there's a fundamental change in the nature of the U.S. government from the capitalist imperialist system we have here. Yeah, they are not going to allow Israel to not have weapons. Yes. The issue is the issue is can the world community force Israel in in into a concession where they'll stop the murders? Yeah. But right yeah. now, there, there, there doesn't seem that we that we haven't reached that understanding of how to do that. Right uh, now, they're they keep, keep killing people. Yeah. Well, that's you know what the Arab states are thinking of. You know, like, uh, but if you know if they want to take on Israel. Then they have to take on the United States of America as well at the same time right. to some degree. Yeah. yeah. Yes, to a certain degree. Yes, to a certain degree. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. But Turkey is the best situated, you know, to do the um, military intervention. They're a very strong, you know, military force. They also have the S three hundred, the Russian anti uh, air, anti uh, aircraft missiles or or anti ballistic missiles. Yeah. Uh, they they're protected. You know, they, the United States cannot attack them except that they've got a base inside the country. <laughs> Yes, wow. a major base, a major base in their country. Mm. Uh, so, I, so I, I can't see Turkey. I mean, I don't know how they would, how they would negotiate that situation, but mm. I can't see them uh, openly attacking Israel militarily mm. with U.S. forces on on yeah. on their soil. They have to do something to the U.S. forces. Yeah, yeah. The chess game is not in their favor, you know, from that point of view, right. for right. sure. Yeah. Right. Right, so, that, right, exactly. you know, but what they could do is they could demand, you know, that the United, the U.S., you know, withdraw its military base, you know, just like, you know, Mali did. And all the French, you know, military are gone there. They could demand the U.S. military base, you know, leave and, well, and that they're quitting NATO. If they did that, even threatening to quit NATO, whoa, because they control the straits, you know, into into the, the Black Sea there. And they, they uh, control uh, much more with their Navy. Well, I, I I do think that you raised a very good, very good, very good uh, ideas, questions, and comments about the the um Tur the Turkey situation because you're right. Hmm. I mean, of any of the of any of the countries in the region who have military have a military force, um, I think that they could they could have a good tussle with Israel or inflict some inflict some losses on key control, command and control, armament, storage dumps, things that Russia has done to Ukraine to weaken Israel. I think we, Israel can be weakened. They can be weakened militarily. They're not, they're not um, omnipotent. The question is, does Turkey want to do that? Are they mm -hmm. willing to do it? And mm -hmm. at this point, it's mostly rhetoric mm -hmm. and UN, UN and also Arab state meeting. So that's where, they, to me, that's where it is right now. Yeah. I could be wrong, but we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it would be a big risk for Turkey to do that. Exactly. For yes, sure, you be. know, they would have yes, to have assurances be. from the Arab countries that they would be backed up. So that if, you yeah. know, if they were attacked, you know, then they would have to get your insurances from the Arab countries that, you know, they would retaliate, you know, for any attack upon Turkey, that they would be included right. in sort of the pan Arab, you know, as the, uh, configuration that they have going there or started there or but, something happened to it, but is it there? But but um but um Abraham, you have twenty six you have between twenty and thirty thousand Palestinians dead, yeah. and most of them are not combatants. Most of them are children and women yeah. and, and men who have nothing to do with Hamas in the sense of they're not fighters, they're not armed combatants. Yeah. So they you know they the U.S. The U.S. Israel alliance has killed a lot of people so far. Yeah. Let's let's look like this in a U.S. high school. If there if there are two thousand students, they have killed. They have wiped out twenty U.S. high schools. Yeah, one percent. Yeah, 
and and they can they control you know how many you know Palestinians are going to be killed you know because they you know they count the number of bombs that they send there you know so that right. determines you know how many Palestinians are going to be killed it's all calculatable you know so right. you know like uh, wake up time to stop it so we got uh, we have a a few minutes left now okay. let's see what can we conclude you know like a, as to what uh, what we can get going. Um, I don't know anything about, you know, the demonstrations that have been going on in the United States, you know, but here, you know, the demonstrations are big, you know, like as everywhere, but they don't do it, you know, like they help to uh, change, you know, Canada to vote for the ceasefire. Yeah. And that means, you know, the whole Anglo world, you know, configuration is gone, you know, like Canada, Australia, New Zealand, you know, have voted for the ceasefire. So, you know, like the US yeah. has, it doesn't have the hegemony over the old British empire anymore. It's, it's it's fractured, you know, it's split, it's gone. You know, the U.S. is more isolated than it ever was, qualitatively, you know, more isolated than it ever was, you know, before. But they're still going through with it, you know, like, yeah. wow. So I, I support, I encourage all of our listeners to get organized, to share videos, to rally, to fundraise, and do everything we can in our power to keep this to keep this movement alive so that it doesn't die out so that people of Palestine know there are people in the Western world and and the Muslim world and the Arab world and the Asian world that support them. Hmm. Okay, and we'll be online uh, tomorrow. We've got, we're we've got support from the Peruvian uh, um, exiles uh, coalition and the Chilean uh, nice. exiles uh, coalition in Montreal now both. So, and we've made an appeal, you know, to others, you know, who are taking, you know, our resistance seriously, you know, to come and help us out, you know, because, you know, I can't keep on going every day like it is, you know, like I, last day I was there all day, you know, like in the afternoon, it was like minus five degrees centigrade, which is like, like, like 10 degrees Fahrenheit or something like that. Very cold, very cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it took a lot of me, you know, I had to recuperate, you know, for the last couple yeah. of days. So, yeah. yeah. Yes. Tomorrow I'll be on the line. Hey, good news. Here, let me show you this, you know, like this shows you what can be. Uh, so here in Montreal, you know, the police, you know, uh, were being very brutal. You know, they were famous for being, you know, so brutal and with having impunity to get away with anything. So right. we had demonstrations against police brutality, you know, and the police would be brutal with us, you know, and the demonstrations would grow and then, you know, would be bigger and bigger. And then finally what they did is they surrounded us and they formed, you know, like a, a, a mass arrest of 300 people. And I was in that, you know, mass arrest of 300 people we were kept out in the cold, you know, in the winter, you know, like on the street, surrounded by police, you know, like, you know, half the night. And then we sued them. And the, the law under which we were arrested, you know, was canceled by the uh, election of a new prime minister, you know, the first woman prime minister of Quebec, Pauline Marois, who uh, for the, you know, left, you know, for the nationalist, you know, Quebecois party, canceled the law that had us arrested in the first place. And then we sued them. And this is, you know, the money that I just got, you know, from having sued the police. $2,181.62. Nice. Nice. There it nice. is, you know. So, there it is. There it is. It shows the importance of making those struggles, even struggles, the legal struggles. We have to always fight on every ground we can peacefully using the laws on our side. Congratulations. Yeah. Now, this is the way to go, you know, resist in all ways possible by exactly. all necessary means with, with the uh, perspective that... Uh, it's not for us alone that we are fighting, you know. Exactly. It's, we're fighting for that. We can win in the long-term sense here internationally and in the long term, even beyond ourselves. You know, it doesn't matter. We're going to win. That's it. That's all. Here and now. Hmm? Here and now. Okay. So here and now. we're getting a hearing and this is uh, what we're doing this for. I just have to figure out how to use the controls here. <laughs> oh, no, I've done something. Okay, yeah, you're being featured now. Yeah, oh, I see. Yeah, no, there we are. Oh, I see. We can do it this way, too. Okay. Okay, enough playing around. Now, 
let's get down to work and let me see how can uh I don't know how to get all the controls back. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Perhaps you can end the session there, or it's going to end soon enough. But uh, do you have any controls at the bottom of your screen? I I can leave. I can leave. So I will leave. Oh, so, well. So oh, uh, okay. No, that's that's not going to do anything, you know, but... Um, uh, um, uh, but... Uh, we're still recording here, you know, so you can say, you know, like, um, say your piece, uh, if you wish, while I'm searching for something here. Well, I just want to, I want to thank all the people who are viewing this program. We put a lot of effort in the meeting regularly. We would like to get your comments on our topics, things that we're saying. We'd like you to press the like button and the share button. Oh, yeah. And also to subscribe. Please press the like button, share, and subscribe so you can hear us, so you can be part of this community of people who are opposed to imperialism, who are opposed to colonialism, who want a, a, a new world for humanity, and joining our, and joining our, our conversation and discussions. Yes. Okay, so uh, this is being broadcast on um, the um, YouTube channel, which is uh, uh, identified as my name, Abraham Weisfeld, even though my... The name that I actually pronounce is Abraham Weisfeld, but nonetheless, it's under Abraham Weisfeld. And uh, uh, we'll put the link, you know, um, in the um, in the sharing sort of features, you know, where it goes into uh, my Facebook of 5,000. And then we can share uh, with all of your, you know, uh, social media connections as well. So, Very okay, good. let's uh, share this around, you know, but we've got about a you know, a serious audience of about 100 people, you know, who understand what we're talking about and who know how to impl implement it. And they're the ones who influence everybody else. So we're on our way. Great. Thank you. Um,